Hey, art nerds! Today we are doing the field test for the Milo Pro Art Markers. These were sent to me by Milo to compare against the Milo Art Markers, and I have three videos so far. This this will be the fourth video in that series, and I would like to thank Milo for sending these for sending me these markers to review. But I also want to point out to you guys that other than the markers, I was in no other way compensated for my time, my talents, or my ability. So if you enjoy what I do, you enjoy these tutorials, these reviews, and you'd like to help me continue to do them, please think about joining me on Patreon. You can join me at patreon.com slash nanosoup and get early access to loads of amazing art supply reviews and tutorials. So I'm going to link all of the relevant videos in the cards. And if YouTube decides that cards are no longer going to work for my channel because I'm a kid-friendly channel, you guys can check the description for all of the links mentioned as well. So here are the swatches from the Milo Pro Unbox and Swatch video. And again, I will link that down in the cards below. And this is the really cute illustration of Kara, the main character from my comic, 7-inch Kara. We're going to be using her as our field test example today. You guys can read that comic for free at 7inchkara.com and 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So for this field test, I'm going to be using both the 24 set and the 12 set that they sent. And I went ahead and I selected colors that I thought would work best for this tutorial. The colors that I've picked are the Colorless Blender, 143 Mint Blue, 139 Flesh, 46 Vivid That's Green, disgusting. 54 Viridian, 71 Cobalt Blue, 81 Deep Violet, 91 Natural Oak, 92 Chocolate, 83 Lavender, 18 Peach, 51 dark green. And if you guys have any questions, we're probably going to lose comment functionality in the near future. So why don't you guys join me on my Discord channel, The Paint Box, and let me know if you guys have any questions about these markers or alcohol markers in general. So first things first, I apply a layer of mint green to the tops and bottoms of Kara's eyes, and I blend that out a little bit using the colorless blender. So one of the things I noticed with the art markers is that they were a very mushy B really saturated the paper and C were very prone to bleeding out so those are all things I'm looking for with these markers next I'm going in with 139 flesh to color her skin tones and what I'm doing is I'm just coloring the shadows on this so if you guys remember the Milo art marker field test, I was sort of limited in the colors that I could choose, and I didn't really like the colors that Milo Art had selected for that box. This box has colors that I feel lend themselves a little bit more to the sort of art that I do. I do a lot of anime and manga inspired art and illustration, so I draw a lot of people. I feel like the colors in the 24 and 12 piece Milo Pro sets are a little bit more geared to the kind of art that I make. I will admit though, I actually like the piece from the Milo Art field test a little bit better than this one. It's just a little bit cuter. Mm -hmm. Using the same color, I'm applying another layer of 139 flesh. As I find that these markers don't saturate the paper as immediately as the art markers do, so you're more able to build up colors and tones the way you would with Prismacolors or Copic markers or Blick Studio uh, brush markers.
So now I'm going in and adding some pink blush using number 18 peach, I believe. And that worked a little bit better than the pink tones we had for the Milo Art Marker box. And I'm also going in with number, I want to say 92 chocolate, but it might be number 91 natural oak to start establishing the colors in her hair. Now, if you guys are interested in a more fully fleshed out review of these markers where I talk more about the colors and the thought behind these sets, please check out the unbox and swatch mark video for the Milo art markers. And I filled in more of the shadows for her hair than I did in the Milo Art Marker Field Test. These pieces are meant to kind of go together, but they're not meant to look exactly alike. I just thought it would be cute to do kind of matching pieces for the two Milo Art Marker sets. And I'm going ahead and I'm adding in freckles with 139 flesh. So 139 was the color I used for her base skin tone. And then 18 peach was the color that I used for the blush areas. And I am filling in the background using 175, which was not one of the colors that I'd mentioned earlier. I apologize for that. It's like a lime green. And we're going to be building up sort of a green ombre the way we built up a blue ombre in our prior field test. So all I'm really doing is just filling the whole area in. I'm not super concerned about saturation right now. About two thirds of the way down, I'm going in with number look like 64, which is a slightly darker green. And adding another layer to her neck with number 139. Actually, no, that is number 46. My apologies, vivid green. Then finally, towards the bottom, I'm going to go in with number 54, Viridian Green.
Now I'm adding another layer of dark brown to her hair with um, number 92, chocolate. And because I allow the prior layer to dry, we're not getting it where it's, it's standing out. We're getting crisp delineations rather than blended delineations. And I have a lot of videos on this channel on how to use alcohol markers that hopefully you guys will check out. And just like in the other field test video, I want an ombre going on with the letters in her name. So I'm doing blues and purples for this. And I'm starting out with number 83, lavender. Then moving in with, I think number 81, deep violet. And I apologize, it is hard for me to see the color caps. And even though I do have this written, speaking of, there will be a transcript in the description below if you're interested. It's still hard for me to see which color is which. And I'm using the same technique, but in reverse for the bottom. So we're starting with the lightest color at the bottom of the letter and then going darker. And Milo sent me these markers to compare to their Milo art markers. I was the one who decided I wanted to do a, to do a full review of them and a full field test. And once I'm finished with these markers, I'm either going to give them to a friend or I'm going to donate them to a public library so that the kids can have access to nice art supplies. I don't run an art supply museum. I cannot house everything that I've purchased or have been sent. So I'm really happy to be able to pass it on to people who can really enjoy them and make good use of them. So I want to thank Milo for enabling me to make other people's lives better through the gift of art supplies. So when handling the Milo Pro markers, these really reminded me of the newer Artist Loft markers, which I actually like. The foam rubber nib makes a huge difference in how usable these markers are. If you were to buy one of these two sets of markers, I would highly recommend you go with the Milo Pro markers over the Milo Art markers. It's like a 10 cent different 
per marker, but I really feel like these are going to last you so much longer because those nibs are not going to fray. The Milo Art markers, the nibs started to fray and get mushy almost immediately, which made them really difficult to use. These markers maintain their foam rubber nibs, which means I can fill in large areas, I can fill in small areas. They're much easier to handle and much more like professional art markers. So I'm going in with some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and adding white highlights and accents to this piece just to make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to have links in the description below to the Amazon listings in case you guys are interested in learning more about these markers or purchasing a set. I will disclose that if you buy things using Amazon links from my channel, I do see a small bounty that helps me maintain this channel, but you guys do not pay any additional costs. That comes from Amazon end. So when you buy using my Amazon links, you're helping support the work that I do here. And I really, really appreciate it. Okay. So we have finished up with the Milo Pro marker review. These are less prone to bleeding than the Milo Art markers and handle fairly well and easily. The foam brushes maintain their tips, so it's easier to fill large and small areas. The included blender works well with these markers. These markers are really blendable and it's easy to do color graduations, particularly with this brush tip. Bleeding is far less an issue with these than it was with the Art markers. So my verdict. Milo Pro markers handle a lot like the new Artist Loft markers. Both are much more affordable than Artist Loft markers. For someone who likes brush markers, these are much easier to use than the Milo Art markers and handle more like professional alcohol markers on the market. I'd like to see refills and replacement nibs offered. Then I could really put them on par with some of my favorite alcohol marker brands. I want to thank Milo for sending me these to compare with the Milo Art markers and remind you guys that though these markers were sent to me for free, I was not compensated in any other way. These videos are made possible thanks to the generosity of my art nerds over on Patreon. So if you enjoy what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, please join me at patreon.com slash natosoup. I hope you guys found this review slash tutorial helpful, useful, and informative. While I still have access to comments, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And you guys will be able to find a link to my art-centric Discord channel in the comments, or I'm sorry, in the description as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye, guys!